okay yeah um okay just reading a verse from proverbs 18 and verse 7 okay um it says a fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul okay i i, I don't know how any other translation reads uh this is nkjv right it says a fool's mouth is his destruction and um and his lips are the snare of his soul okay so um which means that the words that we speak are like a trap for the soul okay so now we know um when it when the bible refers to the soul you know it, in the old testament it uses spirits and spirit and soul interchangeably um but primarily it's talking about the thoughts it's talking about the imaginations right it's talking about whatever uh mental faculty okay so it's saying that a fool's mouth is a destruction and uh, the way it happens is this and his lips are the snare of his soul okay so which means the words that i speak the conversations that i have are actually like a trap for my thoughts my imaginations and whatever i think okay so which means if i'm going to speak things that are i don't know about a particular about myself about my future about how i you know uh, uh, how how i will be and it's going to be like a trap and i'm just thinking like you know uh, if you if you think of a trap you can think of a rat trap right you you put in a coconut or something and then you know you hear that pack you know that thing closes and it's trapped so the words that we speak are like that trap like it closes and it's difficult like the thoughts the imaginations everything that is going on in our minds like it can be fearful thoughts it can be fearful imagination it can be thoughts of failure it can just go over and over and over again because it's it's like a trap because we've spoken it right that is what we are speaking about ourselves and sometimes we don't realize it right uh like in the sense suppose we um it comes as a thought about ourselves right okay i will or today is a bad day or today i am you know i'm in a bad mood or something like that and then we kind of agree with it right we we tell ourselves maybe in our thoughts we tell ourselves um yeah you know uh, this is how, uh, this is how i'm feeling today is going to be a bad day or you know i'm not in a great mood i'm not in a good mood um or, and, and it could be about anything in life you know any aspect of our lives so we we agree we we speak it out um sometimes it's verbal somebody says something and then we agree with it <clears throat> or it could be non verbal also but then it is spoken right it is agreed and it says here that his lips are the snare of his soul now if we want to turn it around since the words that i speak are a trap for my soul how will it be if i speak those words of truth or words that are powerful it's again acts like a trap for the soul right so if i speak powerful words which are words of truth if i agree with the word of god about myself it is again like a trap it's going to be trapping something in my soul the thoughts the imaginations and everything it's going to be there it's going to be trapped there but these are good things it's going to be locked in but these are good things right so um so what we speak you know I, i'm sure we've studied about confession and everything but uh, what we speak is so important what we verbalize is so important um you know and, and until we speak it and until we sometimes we 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 need to say it out loud uh, in order to come in agreement with right so today um yeah why don't we just make some confessions um about ourselves like um you could just say okay uh, you know i'm victorious Uh, i'm a child of god um uh, i'm walking in faith um i'm walking in victory right so many things that we can declare over ourselves right let's let's do that right so um <clears throat> just begin to just pray out in the spirit pray in tongues for some time um just to stir ourselves up in faith in the in a in a you know in in a in a man let's do that Okay, so let's begin to just say this out. You know, I'm blessed. Uh, we can say it out loud. I'm blessed. 
uh, with every blessing that comes from the Lord. Uh, I share and enjoy all the blessings God has for his people. <clears throat> okay. okay, now you need to say this out loud, bold and strong, right? I'm strong and courageous. <clears throat> I'm bold like a lion. Uh, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. The Lord is my confidence and security. Um, okay, now this is about exploits. I know my God and I am strong and I shall do great exploits for God's kingdom. God works in me and through me to accomplish things way beyond that I can ask or think or imagine. Okay, so... Um, Lastly, let's make some declarations about our future. Okay, God knows the plans he has for me. Plans to prosper me. Uh, to give me a future full of hope. Um, God has planned ahead of time <clears throat> things he wants me to do. And I am walking, in, walking into them. Okay, I will discover joyfully the good works the good works that God has prepared for me. And I will walk in them. And I will accomplish the plans and purposes that God has for my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 So, um, you know, just, just imagine if, you, if you're able to do like maybe 30 minutes of you know, just declaring of God's word. You know, these, all this is from Scripture, right? Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, and you know how we are walking in victory, and Ephesians three twenty that He will do able to do exceeding. Level. This is all Scripture. So, if we take about thirty minutes, you know, uh, first thing in the morning, just to declare the word of God, just to speak out the word of God, and say, hey, this applies to me. This is for me, right? Because it is, right? And it will really change the way we face the day, how we start the day. It will really change the way we face situations, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, yesterday, what did we look at? Uh, sermon, construction, and we looked at application, right? <clears throat> okay, so application is, we said that application is very important uh, because that is what helps at the, at the end of it you know you might have we might have shared a good message but at the end of it it is what helps us to put to practice you know take it and do the word of god okay um, james is very clear that let us not be just hearers of the word but let us be diligent doers of the work right? doers of the word so uh, it's good to hear it's good to help people hear the word of god um, but it's important that we make that facilitate that people also carry out right okay so um when do we make uh when do we or teach about the application or when do we you know um, uh, share about the application how to do it okay so it is before we conclude the message right so when we looked at the message we saw there's a introduction then there is that proposition then there could be an interrogative statement, and then you move on, okay, to the main points of the message, right? So that is what we saw. Um, now this is this again. I just want to repeat and said, okay, this is a suggested outline, okay. So it could be different. That's fine, uh, but this outline helps so that it people can receive it, people can remember it, recall, and then apply it, right? Okay. So when it comes to application you do it at the end of the message and say, okay, these are three ways by which we can, uh, you know, go ahead and share the gospel. Like we said yesterday, right? Uh, this is how you do it. You can share the gospel by way of, you know, there are many ways of sharing, sharing the gospel. You can share the gospel by way of uh, maybe a word of knowledge. Like you approach a person, you share a word of knowledge, and that gives you an opening to share the gospel. You can ask permission. You can say, okay, hey, can I... You know, do you mind if I just share something about Jesus? They give you permission, you share it. It can it can also come by means of um, 
a testimony you know you know this is what happened in my life can i tell you this you share it or it can come as a when you see a need in people and then maybe they they are sharing about their life and they're saying okay i'm going through this difficulty or i have this problem in my body financially whatever and that is also a you know an apt time opportunity to share the gospel saying okay i can pray you know, and this is the reason i pray and this is what jesus did right so th those are uh, ways by which we can share so uh, in the application part we can really share this right, the practical aspect of it and then we can share it okay so some things for us to under, understand is that um, the application is not the conclusion okay so conclusion or the end is when we wrap things up maybe summarize and and end the message right so the application is before the conclusion it's not the conclusion itself um, <clears throat> so uh, the, the right time is once we've finished the sermon, and all the points have been explained. Now you go into the application part, right? Now, when it comes to the application, like right, there are certain messages where, let's say, you have three points to share. At the end of every point, you know, there needs to be an application. Okay. Like, for example, if you're talking about the gifts of the Spirit, and your let's say you are teaching on word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and uh, prophecy. Okay, so three different gifts. So at the end of each of these gifts that you've explained, you can actually have a application. Right? Okay, this is how it works. This is how you can actually work or walk in this gift in your life. Mm. Okay, so you have three points. We don't have to wait till the end of the message to give the application for all the three points. You get what I'm saying, right? So it will be too much to handle. So you can actually share at the end of every point and say, OK, gift word of knowledge. OK, this is how you receive. This is how you do it. This is how you walk in it. Word of wisdom, this is how you do it. Then prophecy, this is how you receive it. This is how you pray, perceive, prophesy. This is how you work it out. And then, and maybe at the end of it, application can be okay to press in more, to pray more, to uh, you know, to be sensitive, to you know, look out for opportunities to share, etc. That can be, but at the end of every point, there can be an application point. Okay, so so you see what your message is, you know, how your message is, uh, what is the theme of the message. Based on that, we can actually alter or modify the application. So it can be right at the end, or it can be at the end of every point that you're sharing. Right, like for example, this, uh, you know, the the message on the gospel, sharing the gospel, can be just one application right at the end. Okay? It doesn't have to be, you know, why is the gospel, you know, the important message uh, to be shared? What is the gospel? There's no application there. You know, if you look at those points, there's no, there's nothing to apply there rather than to just know, hear, understand. Right. So there, it makes sense to have one application uh, right at the end of the message. Okay, so you decide where it is. Okay, then conclusion is the end of the message. Uh, you know, it's 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 good to summarize and then just end it. Okay, don't drag the ending. Right. Uh, I remember one pastor, uh, elderly gentleman. Right. Um, this is in the Methodist Church, and uh, he always found it very. Um, difficult to end. He would have shared, and he'll, he'll just be going on and on. So I'll be, you know, I always joke about it, saying he's trying to land, but he's not able to. He's just going around the airport once, twice. Uh, when will he land? Everybody is getting restless. Okay, when is he going? Because he's finished. He's finished sharing. Okay, we all know there's nothing more to be said, but he's not landing the plane. He's just going around and around. You know. So what happens is. You know, it might have been a fantastic word, but it gets, you know, it gets bored. It gets diluted. The impact of it is lost because you've not concluded it well. And most times, we don't think about the conclusion, right? We're thinking about okay, how to start the message, what will I share in the message, what illustration can I give, you know, how to apply it. But very rarely do we think about the conclusion. How do I end the message, you know? Uh, okay, somehow I'll end it. I'll just pray. Okay, let's close our eyes and pray, and then we'll end it. We won't think about the conclusion. But conclusion is as important as the introduction, right? Because it 
it's what you leave with the people it can be a very impactful uh, thing so um conclusion and of course you know we talk about uh, in a typical church setting or a, or even a you know maybe like a meeting um we uh, we do uh, go into a time of ministry right so we've shared the application and conclusion we we can go into a time of we ended the message we can go into a time of ministry now now the ministry time is really powerful because we've shared the word we are giving an opportunity for people right then and there to act on the word right maybe it's something that can be acted upon right then and there you know it's something on faith something that people can respond to so we're giving an opportunity for people to act on it we're giving an opportunity for people to respond to the word and we are inviting the lord we are inviting the power or presence of the holy spirit to come and minister to people's hearts right it's like you know opening the door we are it's a risky time you know anything can happen right uh, the lord will minister in different directions maybe he starts giving words of knowledge on about people and maybe he wants to heal bodies and minds and you know he wants to bring about restoration reconciliation in people's lives you know, so many wonderful things and we miss out on it if we don't really step in press in right because it's a risky thing in the sense we don't know you don't know what's going to happen but then we can always you know maybe nothing you know nothing may major spectacular would happen you know like maybe that's just the presence of god just a peace that, uh, that you feel in your heart and everybody is also feeling the same thing and we just close or you know maybe there's just god just starts you know giving those words and you go from one to the other and then you know you're acting on it and there's a lot of things happening right it could it could go either, you know either way right so uh yeah you know, so so a conclusion can go into a time of ministry okay okay uh, nina you want the reference for probs right probs we looked at 18 i think right 18 and verse 7 probs 18 verse 7 <clears throat> okay um okay then look, let's look at uh, the language that we use in order to preach the message you know we will come back to this uh, a little later you know a more of this uh, when we look at the presentation some practical aspects the language okay uh, it's always good to use clear simple language that people can understand and of course when we're talking about language also you know different different languages people which people can understand you know if if it's a, a different language that you speak and then the people also people understand a different language so it's always good to have a translator and uh, and so it can be effective right so use language use words that clearly communicates the message you know sometimes what happens is we we use a lot of words and it sounds good as a sen you know a sentence that we use but it's not really communicating clearly okay because the words that we're using are maybe complicated words maybe you know i i remember a professor in in college uh i think it was marketing management that he taught but he'll always use like long sentences like right? very long sentences so by the time he finishes the sentence uh people are tired and okay you know it's long and he will also use multiple words like right, for the same thing like he say for example if he wants to ask what is your name he'll say what is your name what you call yourself by you know for example you know what 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 is the thing that parents have given you like he wants to sound very dramatic uh but the thing is uh, that doesn't work like in a classroom setting and it will be very very classes are long uh whatever he communicates is very less the points that he makes but then he's speaking a lot of words okay, so um the thing is that, you know we're not here to show or you know vocabulary or yeah uh, skill in words etc we are here to communicate right so uh, the actually actually to communicate to well in a simple manner it's very complicated i mean it's very difficult challenging right yeah uh, you can use a lot of big words and you can say a lot of things but then to really communicate in a simple uh, manner it's um, it's it's challenging right and we can learn to do that and we can always improve 
Okay. Um, choose words that most people in the congregation will understand. Now, you know that in the audience, there will be different people, maybe different levels of education, um, different uh, levels of, you know, language ability, right? So when you look at what does the majority understand, right? So use those words. Uh, avoid long sentences. Um, make sure that, uh, you know, you continually improve yourself so that your language is grammatically correct. Okay, because if there are grammar mistakes, then it's a struggle for people again. It's a strain. People are straining, right? Especially those who know the language, right? Have you been in a meeting where, you know, maybe, uh, you know, the, the message has been translated and you know both the languages, okay? And the translation is making a mistake, right? You know that, right? And it, it's, a, it's a struggle. You know, you're feeling, oh, no, that's not it. You know, you want to correct, but you can't, right? And, and the same kind of stress you feel when you know the language and the person is maybe making grammatical errors uh, and then they are saying, see, it's not a big thing. God can't speak despite that, right? I've been in meetings where people don't know the language. Or they know very few words, but the power of God is there. So that's there, you know. But if you want it to be effective in the long run, if you want to teach, right, teach the word, if you want to, you know, communicate the power uh, or the truth of what you want to share, uh, if you want it to be effective, it's best that you improve, that we improve the language, right? Um, and also, the uh, along with grammar, what is the word? You know, what is it, how how is it how is it spoken? How is it said, right? Um, Many times when we learn a certain word, we learn it, we learn it wrong. For example, you know, um, there is, uh, okay, the people who are robbers in sea, okay, who go on ships and rob, the word for them is pirates, right? Now, I encountered the word when I was reading a comic, okay? So, I, I for me, in my mind, it was piratis, okay? I, so, I read it as piratis. And for a long time, it was Pirates in my mind. <laughs> so I didn't know that it was called Pirates, right? And I remember, you know, I think I spoke, said it out, hey, about this Pirates, and then people said, hey, it's not Pirates, it's Pirates. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, things like that, right? So you learn it wrong. But thankfully, today you have YouTube. You can just say, how is this word pronounced, right? You can just type it in, you hear it, you can get it in the actual original language, which is English, um, which is UK, I mean, British English. You can hear it in American English, which is a friendlier version of it. And you can now almost hear, you know, any other version of it, how that word is said. Okay. So, so we can understand. Um, and I always do that. You know, sometimes I, I think, okay, how is this word said? You know, I think this is how I've been using it. Uh, but how is it said? You know, uh, it's, it's always good to go back and check. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Any questions here? Anything on um, the application or any other aspect of sermon construction? Okay. Um, no, no, these are practical guidelines. These are not APC guidelines. It is yeah, generally, you know, wherever you go, uh, if you're preaching, uh, you can, you know, you'll find this. It's not just for APC. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Aran's question is uh, the third point. Do not use scholastic language. So yeah. Yeah, but it's they they say like, see, um, if we see if we see this. Brahmins and all the people who converted from Brahmins, they use so I mean unique language when they are preaching. So that that impress I mean that that uh, gets the people right people's in uh, attention. So the thing is this you know it depends on the audience again you know, but the simple language will work for any audience. 
whether they learn it unlearn it whatever it's just very simple clear communication will work for anyone yes it is true like you know maybe uh, <clears throat> you're addressing scientists and scholars and you know those kind of people educators and all that be understand you know like um, uh, some of the uh, apologetic speakers no like ravi zakar and then stuart mcallister and and all these people they've used you know, the, you know there's so much idea packed in one word so much concept in one word um and uh, if a person were to talk about it simply it will take maybe a paragraph to explain it okay but then that one word contains the whole idea so if if you understand that one word it sense it, it makes perfect sense you know i can just say um you know a debate right but if the person does not know what the debate is then i have to say okay maybe i can say ideas you can say some ideas and we can talk about it and argue about it uh, you know things like that so so that's the thing so it depends on the audience and uh, and also you know uh, where god is using us you know consistently yeah but a simple way to communicate will work anywhere that's the thing yeah <laughs> Paul's uh, poems, ah, uh, yeah, poems are. Uh, it depends again, you know. Uh, it's yeah. There are poem poems that are simple, which don't use. Uh, you understand it, and there there are there are some which don't, you know, which you can't. Yeah. 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 Uh, so pastor coming to language like what about style pastor like the people have a particular style so basically i'm from kerala so like i saw preachers like us they have a particular style and particular language style maybe like yeah like no, not slang maybe the sound will be boss sound and also like whenever this slowly message is going people will sleep suddenly they will wake up and hallelujah something they will do <laughs> so what would they do yeah so again you know uh, yeah people do have unique types of speaking like for example if you huh yeah sir so speech and also i think we're going to look at it uh, now about whether it's a message that is preached or taught okay so yeah that is also that also depends like um let's say uh, somebody like steven fertig i'm just using these names because you know you see their styles of thing steven fertig or bishop td jakes you know they they are preachers and to say one point they are sweating it out and you know they they just dramatize it and very theat theatrical about it and they making that point okay it's like what you can call a punch dialogue <laughs> right you know just saying it the same thing if you were to have a teacher say it and say it very simply you know like i don't know if you heard any messages by derek prince he'll just say it in a monotone or you know andrew andrew omack it's very it's very difficult to keep your eyes open you know when you're suppose you're tired and all it's very difficult they don't even voice doesn't even go up and down it's like one same flat and that's it so yeah so the different ways of delivering it we'll we'll look at it so um yeah i mean different styles work for different kinds of messages and it's fine it's fine as long as it's uh, i mean that's the way you know that's your natural way of doing things you know it's it's fine i guess yeah mm. yeah and also it it should not interfere see sometimes too many hallelujahs and praise the lord no <laughs> it just it's a waste i feel that you know it's not like okay you're getting people to praise the lord you're using it as part of your conversation you know when i when i first joined the church huh fillers time fillers gap filler it is what we call as verbal fat in the sense you know you're saying a lot of things it doesn't really make sense you know um you don't mean it also like when i joined the church first <clears throat> beginning like see i i come i don't come from a charismatic background as such right so come from a like csi church csi background so methodist and all that 
so we don't really uh, at least you know we don't wish people saying praise the lord praise the lord brother we don't say you know so I, for me it was uh, it was a different because on the phone i will get a phone call and people will say you know praise the lord brother so the thing is i don't know who it is you know the, the person is saying praise the lord praise the lord so i'm so my the thing is okay praise the lord and then you know what else what do you you know who is it what do you want um so you know for me it was a very difficult thing uh, initially to get over it uh, yeah and then and then you understand so this hallelujah praise the lord you know we use we should use it well you know you use it well and use it use it in the sense mean it really you know does it uh, so, uh, don't use it as a filler don't use it to just you know get people excited i know people still use it you know hallelujah <laughs> you know the longest hallelujah and all that it's fine you know i i get it it's fine you know you really want to praise the lord you want to be militant about your praise you know i'd love to do that but when where how just because people are sleeping you're doing one hallelujah it's, i don't think it's you know it's good so that's the thing yeah okay we have some questions it is um is a okay jack in says is a powerpoint always required for teaching preaching does that make those who hear more attentive definitely it's a presentation aid um and it depends on how you use the powerpoint again you know you can use you can have a very busy slide a lot of information defeats the purpose you can have just one visual one point helps greatly um so so what are the points what points should we consider putting in the slides only the verses or pointers or application it can be anything you know whatever you want to yeah verses definitely it will help references um and then um, certain important points that you want to put you can put that um maybe we can look at it at a later time like you know um what not to do in a presentation right um <clears throat> what not to put or how to keep a presentation uh, impactful because uh, you know we, we we don't want to treat it like a sermon notes right that's not the idea uh, we want to aid or enhance what you're saying and at the same time help people recall uh, things so it can be a combination of combination of uh, visuals and uh, you know text and you can use it in the right way so it can be a great help right? especially you know today's time when we put things online it can be a real uh, great help we'll we'll look at we'll come to it jack in um, yeah Okay, so um, yeah. Okay, so let's. Any other? Yeah, yeah sorry. That's just uh, like next question is like I used to bridge for uh, like I will use background music. So one day what happened is like I hear on preach. I hear on preacher like he is giving the music like a movie type. Like he will go to reach the point like. something music if i so because of that i stopped that playing background <laughs> so is this needed or is this i think see i don't know too much about it but what i've seen is that um, like some of the black churches no like black american um churches and i think it it comes from there right so um where um, somebody is there playing their like uh, organ and then uh, when the when the preacher makes a point they like you know he's just playing loud uh, like hallelujah and then <laughs> so i i feel that that's a i mean that's an amazing skill also uh it works for that setting okay so like in a black church like uh, i've never been in one uh, always wanted to it's like people are running around people are standing up uh, you know suddenly there's one you know sudden praise break and everybody's so all that is there it's like so it's like a workout when you go to church and come everybody's like sweating and you know so um, it's like that it works but then um, yeah so the thing is see music is powerful right Mu- like we see in um, uh, is it elisha's case where he says just give me a bring me a musician right so we don't know what kind of music was played what instrument but then he starts playing and it says scripture says that the hand of the lord came upon the prophet and he goes on to say thus says the lord 
So music is, is a powerful tool, right? Uh, in worship, uh, because it's it is a vehicle uh, and used rightly, you know, uh, anointing and everything happens. Um, so it's a powerful tool. So yeah, in that sense, we can, you know, we can use. You you feel that okay? I I'd like something to be played in the background for a message. There's nothing wrong, you know. There's one preacher I know uh, who always has a person playing an acoustic, like his son plays the acoustic guitar. He'll be playing something soothing, something soft, and he, he likes that. Um, yeah, it's fine. I think, but as long as it doesn't become a manipulation, see, music also is used to is a mood enhancer, right? So you go walk into any mall or you know any shopping, this thing, they got music playing because they I know they know that you come from the you know traffic and then you the AC hits you as you walk in as you walk in, and then you hear the music and you're feeling fine. Wow, I think I'll buy this. I think I'll buy that. You know, you're feeling so nice and. Uh, you'll buy more than what you need. You know, it's it's a it's a manipulation. Also, you can use it to manipulate. And I think um, I think I don't know whether we discussed it earlier. Like, you know, there was this rap concert. People went there, and then at the end of the concert, people went on a rampage. Right, There's a whole mob because of the the violent lyrics and the way the music was. Right. So and so heavy metal concerts and so on. So music can manipulate. So am I using music to manipulate? I, the same way, am I using my voice and and whatever I'm saying to manipulate people? You know, do I want them to feel sad? Do I want them to feel, you know, emotionally moved? Rather than be moved by truth or be convicted by the power of God's word, if I'm just getting them emotionally moved, right, then it becomes manipulation. And we don't... You no, know, you don't want to do that, right? Um, it can happen when it, when it's like maybe you want be give you want people to give into ministry, you know, manipulation. You want people to be moved to make a decision, altar call. Again, it's it's unnecessary, and that's not see that will not stay long. You know, it's because it's emotion. If you if you somebody can get you emotionally high. Emotion will go, you know, when they leave, emotions will go. But the truth, the conviction of truth, that will stay, whether there are emotions or not, you know. So that's the thing. So it's a fine line, and we need to be careful. Yeah. Need for the music or synth pad in the background when we are preaching. Disciples and Jesus never use they they never use the microphones only. And he was, I mean, making a statement like, if if there is a power in the word, if you if you can make it, if you depend on Holy Spirit, why you need this? And uh, and the, how what you said, if if we maybe we can temporarily can raise their emotions, just for just for the time they they stay there, but afterwards it will go very easily, and the word stays longer. That's true, yeah. So that's the thing. But also we need to understand that, you know, one other extreme is I will not use music at all. That's another extreme, right? Saying that, okay, singing, you sing a cappella. No, no, no drums, no you know, guitars, nothing, no music at all. But the fact is that the Lord has given these, these the Psalms are full of it. Even Revelation, we read about it. At least trumpets are there, you know. Uh, harps are there, so you know. So there is music; it has a place because that's how we are created: spirit, soul, body, and we are created to enjoy, respond to, and it has a spiritual connotation as well, right? So it can be used well. It should be, yeah. It should be used well, rightly. Yeah. Okay. Online folks, any? Anything that you'd like to share? Any questions? Okay. Pastor, I thought I, I just wanted to share this one. Like I remember. Jacqueline is saying something. About... Sorry. Um, yeah, Jacqueline, say again, please. Can you hear now, Pastor? Yeah, I can. Uh, so there was this Billy Graham crusade, and 
he always uh, ends it the the song amazing grace so uh, when during that crusade like once there was somebody who told that because of the song and because of this emotions that being played that many people give their life to christ and then uh, once he decided i'm not going to he was so upset and he stopped singing and that's when more people uh, more than any other crusade many people gave their lives to christ so as you said i think it's the power of the holy spirit and the anointing and not in the song or the or the words that we say so i just want yeah to- Yeah, true, true. Yeah, that's true. So it's not the it's not the music, it's not the thing. But then I also also want to say that you know, uh, truth when sung, truth when used with the right music, anointed music, is even more impactful. And I'm you know, so yeah, so it's it's not just the emotional part of it. It's a, it's, it's what stirs the spirit, and it can be rightly used. Right? Yeah. Okay, so um, uh, let let let's just uh, look at chapter ten, ministering God's word. Different forms of delivery. Okay, so different forms of let's say communicating a message. You know, one is you can just preach it simply, right? So you say it, um, and that is the most common one. Second one is a illustrated sermon or dramatize it, right? Um, and also uh, it can be like. A, Where where people come, act out certain things that can also be, you know, a very powerful way. It helps for a you know a certain audience. It helps for even a younger audience. It helps grab people's attention. So you can actually dramatize it. Um, uh, it can be in a story form. I remember watching a video, and it was actually on the uh, message of Ruth, right? Ruth and Naomi, and and he. this person i didn't i never realized you know it was about it was such a modern story right he talked about he gave modern names like today's names very contemporary names and he was talking about you know this is what happened and then he was talking about uh, the lives of these people that they went there to this land the city and they started life and so you never realize it but he was actually narrating the story of ruth right and it was very powerful because he made it in today's context right um so it was very very uh, very powerful so you can actually have it in story form and at the end you tie it all together right um fourth one props on stage of course you can use props um children's ministry you know people use props very effectively even for you know uh, other uh, you know general uh, other age groups you can definitely use props you know um and it's going to take some time take some planning uh to use props so props we are talking about you know the if you're talking about let's say if you're teaching on the uh the armor right efficient 6 spiritual armor you, know, you can actually use those props you know we we think about it and we visualize okay this is what a helmet is like and this is what a shield is like um but you if you ha- actually have those things you know and people maybe each part you know you have one person and then you fit it on that person it is even more powerful right you can see it and and there was this person um, he passed away uh, i don't know if you've seen videos of carmen person called um, he was a evangelist slash you know preacher c a r m e n okay so he was uh, very good at this illustrated you know using props on stage uh very contemporary uh things of those times and i'm talking about maybe 80s 90s uh not even yeah 90s i guess he was way ahead of his time then uh but he'll go you know sometimes uh, out of the way you know like um, uh like bring some snakes i think some cobra I mean, not cobra python and uh, use it and, and there was this um there was this lady preacher who comes on to stage dragging dragging a coffin and uh, and just to make the point that i'm dead in christ the old person is dead okay so something like that right um so you can use props okay you can sing it uh, it can be a musical it can be a message whole thing can be a sung um can be a song um 
and i think there are some uh, rural village presentations like this you know uh, like i don't know what you call it in different uh, like in in tamil they call it katha uh, kalajabam okay that's what it call in tamil though so uh, yeah in villages the whole stories are sung it's a song and uh, like i've heard uh, um i forget what right from creation okay right from creation you know fall of man cross everything being sung um i don't know if you have you ever seen, you know in, it's in a typical village setting right Do you, uh, you know it, it, the whole thing is sung and it'll be like um, it'll be sung in a in and it's it'll be like a folk song right it'll be acted so the whole thing is like this right people are on stage people are sitting down and uh, they are singing it um so it's not like a song intro not like you know uh, explain explanation about the song or some message in between it's not like that the whole message is actually sung um so i don't uh, maybe i'll see if i can get a video and then you know so whole thing is sung and it works very well for that kind of a you know like a rural audience because they're used to it and the whole message goes through the whole story is um, uh, you know because visuals powerpoint slides videos we can enact it and also have something like a talk show okay where there is a panel sitting i remember we we had one we had one like this okay for a i think it was for a, a easter sunday service it was like a talk show i'll try and get that video also um so it was nice nicely done okay so there are various ways by which we can communicate it and you can choose you know it doesn't have to always be a you know message that you want to preach say it with you know with words but you can use other creative ways but it's going to take a lot out of you the creatively planning you know all those things but it's worth it okay okay we'll stop here and uh, we'll continue next class thank you mm -hmm.